Hello, superstars! Welcome back to UC Star Astrologies. I'm your astrologer, Cindy. <laughs> so this is going to be the general horoscope reading for Leo, March 2017. And I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to all the fans and family and friends who supported me to continue these videos because I was going through a burnt out phase. And I would say astrology wise, it really, it really made sense because I was born with South Node and Mercury next to each other conjuncted. And it, when the Mercury and the South Node came together, it was like, I don't want to know anything about Facebook, I don't want to know anything about YouTube, I don't want to know, anything. I just like, and it happened in Aquarius that has to do with connecting, networking, network circles with friends, and yes, even then, and Venus was there too, Venus and Mercury together and next to the South Node, and yes, I had to drop a friend, and I just like pushed back from the world, and I went through like this burnt out, what is what is Mercury? Mercury has to do with your mind, your intelligence, and when it's next to the south node, it's like shutting down, and I felt really sick, you know, because I'm Gemini ascendant, and and I did a cleansing on my gallbladder and my and my liver, and that threw my immune system for a loop, and I got the flu. So, but I am back. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having patience with me because I had to let things go and I was figuring, you know, I made a video, should I stop astrology because something, you know, I have to let go of some things. That, so I let go of the things that were causing me stress, but making videos actually makes me very happy. So this is a hobby of mine, a passion of mine, and I'm not going to let that go. I have to let go of the other stuff. Okay, so we're... I'm back. Dear Leo, this is your horoscope, your general horoscope for March 2018. Now, off the bat, on the 1st of March, we have this full moon in Virgo. This is happening in the house, your second house that has to do with the money that you were earning. It has to do with... Um, how you are, okay, what is the full moon? Full moon is the fruition of, of something that was culminating. And the moon has to do with your emotions. It has to do with your focus, your thoughts, okay? And your focus and your thoughts are on your finances, on the money that you are earning. And it's happening in Virgo, the constellation that has to do with um, trying to organize yourself. This is also that constellation that has to do with work. So this is really good for Leo in regards to your career, in regards to work, getting more work. The activities, your daily activities are going to um, be even more. So um, the full moon tends to uh, hear, it could be that some Work project comes to a culmination, to a fruition, to an end. Uh, maybe you finished up on one project. Um, very possible that you then... Um, um, promotions really usually happen when there's like this full moon eclipse and then you get promoted. Um, but still this, this, this blessing is there for many to, to come to you and that you're feeling cherished by your your colleagues in your workplace. You're feeling like a lion, you know, it's like let the money grow. You're trying to also think of ways to make more money, okay? Um, so your thoughts definitely are on your finances. They are on your, um, your possessions, your house. Um, uh, and your car and wanting to um, upkeep and your car and upkeep your house so it may just be that time to to take your car to, for servicing and uh, but your thoughts are going to be on these things 
you know, repair and fix things in um, things that you own, the possessions you own. Now, we have on the 6th of March, Venus and Mercury on the same day, arm in arm, hand in hand, just skipping into your ninth house. This is your lucky house. This is the house that has to do with philosophy and higher education, higher learning. You're going to, with Venus here, Venus has to do with love and luxury and just, um, you could, you could feel um, drawn to other cultures. You, you could feel like, Oh, I'm I'm in the mood to to go and eat some Thai food, or you may just feel in the mood to travel and to visit other cultures and think about other philosophies. Mercury is also the the planet that has to do with um, planes, trains, and automobiles. So, and also the ninth house has to do with traveling to some um, far distant lands. And so the opportunities may may open for Leo to travel, to go on vacation, and um, and um, just Venus is wanting you just to indulge in the luxury. Maybe you're wanting to travel to meet someone. You know that's also very possible. Meeting someone of a different culture. You're going to be. Um, drawn <laughs> to someone of a different culture as well if you are single so um, maybe you meet someone online and then you decide that um, that you're going to travel to visit them okay so um, another thing is <laughs> Mercury and Venus is all about flirtation so and other places that you can meet people are in uh, places that have to do with philosophy, like churches, places that have to do with religion, um, so any kind of facilities or anything where you gather and you're um, talking about philosophy or you're being preached at or whatever. You can be flirting with someone within the church or so. Just don't flirt with those nuns and priests, baby. You're going to have to, they're going to have to then lash themselves a hundred times for having dirty thoughts of you. <laughs> I'm so naughty. <laughs> so don't make, don't make them go through that, okay? If you're tempting a, a, a nun or a priest or a monk. <laughs> okay, so. Um, because the ninth house has to do with these types of people, priests and nuns, professors and policemen, lawmakers, people of uh, authoritative figures, okay, teachers, so, yeah. <laughs> I always remember that movie from Raiders of the Lost Ark where that woman has that on her eyelids written, I love you, and then she blinks her eyes, and Tom, um, Tom Jones, is that his name? No, not Tom Jones, blah, blah, blah. Indiana Jones looks at her and sees <laughs> she's flirting with him, probably to get an A in the class. Anyway, this is, by the way, Venus in the ninth house also, and Mercury in the ninth house also gives you a lot of creativity and a lot of intelligence to pass that test, to do very well in in um, school, in universities, anything, uh, any kind of courses or higher education. Very harmonious energy um, um, in, like, if you're going to meditational um, groups or prayer groups or churches, whatever, okay? So then on the 8th of March, we have Jupiter going retro in your fourth house that has to do with your home, that has to do with your family. And up to now, you know, a lot of Jupiter in the 8th house was like, like if you were a single kind of a Leo, it's like, 
always bringing the ladies home into your into your crib you know it's the word that MTV uses into your crib and 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 um like like a, uh um Casanova with his own house or whatever and having you know <laughs> lots of one night stands or whatever anyway <laughs> when Jupiter goes retrograde Jupiter is going to sort of make you put the brakes on that okay um makes you want to be a little bit more deeper with one person if you were abusing his energy in this way then Jupiter is going to put the brakes on you you know doing one night stands if you were not doing one night stands and and for instance if you were like trying to um renovate your house or or um pimp up your car <laughs> and whatever you were doing it may yeah you may be renovating but it's going to things are going to slow down for one reason or another you know Things are going to, they're still going forward, but they're going forward slow motion, and it's not going to get done as fast as you thought it would get done, okay? Um, this also, it makes you, it makes you also think inwardly about your place within the family and how you're getting along with your family there's there's um transformation happening here within your soul and your connection with your family okay then on the 14th of march ah this jupiter going retrograde is now talking to this pluto in a not a very harmonious way if it's squaring you know it's semi squaring pluto um, and so you want to be careful like it how you know you want to be careful how you're talking with your co-workers you don't want to tell them about your secrets of what's going on in your family you know just this is um you don't want you don't want to talk to your family either about what's going on at work this is something like Something's not right in regards to what's going on at the workplace and what's going on at home. Maybe you're having to work late at night to, and then your family's thinking like, you know, where are you? Where's your presence? And why aren't you here with us? And we had all this going on and maybe you were all together doing some kind of work and project on the home but then you have to go to work and you can't be at two places at one time something's just not right something is not harmoniously working out here between your work home and family life okay so your daily activities something's not right there could be also um um some transformation just happening here in regards to to your work and your home life okay so um then on the 13th of march we have venus eight degrees in aries and saturn eight degrees in capricorn they are squaring each other so what does this mean perhaps you're having to work, but maybe you you had planned to go on a vacation or, or um, with your love, with your lover, with your partner, with whoever you're in a romantic relationship with. Maybe you made plans, but then your work around the 13th of March um, sort of puts the brakes on that because Saturn tends to put the brakes on that. So... It, an authoritative figure may say, no, sorry, can you, like, just uh, push that vacation? The best time to go on vacation this month is in the beginning of the month 
and at the end of the month. So the first week of the month and then one and a half weeks at the end of the month. Then you have no problem. But in the middle of the month, something is going to, you know, something's going to put the brakes on you being able to enjoy your work. Maybe you are, maybe you do make it out and, and, and you're, you are um, on the island or something and you're enjoying your vacation and everything and, and then you have to cut your vacation short. Your boss calls all, you know, oh my gosh, we're going to lose this deal if you don't get in now. And you're having to tell your wife, oh my gosh, I have to leave, you know, sorry, you know, and she you leave the person alone on the island and they decide to stay there and and they say okay then go go to your work yeah they're gonna be pissed off and that's also what can happen okay around the 13th of March nearing the 13th of March when Venus is getting closer to Saturn so the first seven days is perfect time to go on vacation and then like also, the last week is you can continue then that vacation somewhere else. Okay, so um, then on the 17th of March, 17th of March, we have um, another thing that could happen here with this Venus and Saturn is maybe you are on vacation and then you get diarrhea because you drank the water there and it just didn't work right because. Um, the sixth house also has to do with your health. So maybe you say, who cares what Cindy says? I'm going to go on vacation for two weeks anyway. We'll see what happens. And so it could be that, yeah, you're there. But then at the at the middle of the time, all of a sudden, you ate something wrong. You may get, like, food poisoning or you get diarrhea because of the water. So, you know, be weary of, of these things. Okay, be careful. <laughs> on the 17th of March, there's a new moon in Pisces in your 8th house. The has, this is the deepest house of spirituality, esoteric knowledge. It has to do with transformation, death and life and rebirth and reincarnation. It has to do with... Um, Inheritances, things that you, other people's money, things that you are getting from other places like from your spouse or from your business partner, um, from the bank loans or whatever. Other, any, other money resources other than the money that you are personally earning, okay? Now, we have this new moon. What is a new moon? It's void of light. It's void of emotion. It's void of, of, you know, it's not, a, it's not anything coming into fruition or so. It's the opposite. It's like something must, something must come to an end. It's like turning off the light and then turning the light on again. It's like turning off the light and it's like, who there? Who there? <laughs> Where's everything? You know, it's like having to re-jump your life in regards to these things that I just now explained, okay? Something turns, something comes to an end or um, like you realize something and it's going to be really hard. Why? Because this new moon is 26 degrees in Pisces. And guess who is sitting 26 degrees in Pisces? Chiron is sitting here 26 degrees in Pisces. <sighs> That's like gives me chills to think about because here in Austria I have a second ascendant and that is Pisces. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm not happy about that. First, this Jupiter goes retrograde, and then this new moon. Hallelujah. So, uh, yeah, so Chiron, the wounded healer, and it's happening in your sixth house. And the eighth house has to do with your 
with not only your love life, your sex life. And, okay, these things like maybe the money doesn't come in and you're like, ouch, you know, what the hey happened? Or maybe your wife or spouse got got fired and all of a sudden you're like, okay, now who's going to bring in this dough to help me pay the rent? And that is possible, okay? Or for some reason the bank is saying, you know, um, something is not right here, okay? Um, um, like if you got a, a, a house loan or to pay for a house or something and then... Um, there's some kind of an ouch happening here in regards to other money resources, okay? Hmm. But if you are sexually active, put a condom on it, okay? It could also be that someone is confronting you like, <laughs> if you are if you're wanting to have a boyfriend or girlfriend or something and they say to you can you go get a checkup before I get involved with you just to make sure that you know <laughs> that you don't have anything and then you go and 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 you get a checkup and find out holy moly you know I have I have some syphilis or whatever. I'm sorry, Williams. <laughs> but you know, this is just the this is just for the really, really naughty and uh, cause Leo right now Leo right now has the North Node and if you have your sun and if you have lots of planets like Sun and Mars sitting next to the North Node right now you're horny as hell, and you're, like, spreading your seed all over the place, okay? Not all Leos are this way. It depends on your birth chart. It depends on your other planets. But there are some Leos right now who may be, like, playboys and maybe spreading their seed all over the place. And and then all of a sudden, you, you this is very possible. Now... I'm always trying to protect the people who are watching and saying, you know, be careful. Also, just be careful, okay? Um, if this is not it, it could also be where, with this new moon, what if it could be something like you just stressed or you strained yourself, like some men, that if they ran a lot or, or they could just like have an ouch, you know, something where they strain their balls or something because the eighth house has to do with genitals, okay? So, and Chiron has to do with pain. So, something is going down and Pisces and the eighth house has to do with sexuality, okay? So, just there, there's could be some kind of kind of an ouch here. If it has nothing to do with your genitals, then it, it in health wise because I get into the health as well as the finances. It could be the finances, or it could be that your husband or your wife says I want a divorce. Okay, it could be that, um, or it could be that you ask someone to marry you and they say. I'm not interested in getting married. That could be also a painful ouch, okay? That, or you're wanting someone to move in with you, and they say, I'm, "I don't want to." Or, or you're in some kind of a business contract, and they say, "You know, I want out of this contract. I don't want to be making business with you." It could be that your business partner and you split up, okay? So that that is also very possible, and then. The new moon, what that means is when that happens, then there's something new that happens here, okay? So, yeah, maybe you stop, maybe, like, if Leos have been promiscuous, you may decide to stop being promiscuous because you met that person. Someone could, like, turn your head around it and, and it it could also be that the reason you stop being promiscuous or so it's like the, the light turns off and the light turns back on and it could be like you met the one that finally made you realize you don't want to go out and 
spread your seed all over the place. You want to stick with just that one person. And so um, it's it's going to, in a way, like an out, you know, letting go of your bachelor hood and saying sayonara to that playboy side of you and and um, just being then with that one person that one person may give you a um, ultimatum like either if you want to be with together like if you go back to your ex and they say you want to get together with me then it's only going to be me and it's you're going to have to forget you know your your <laughs> playboy ways and um yeah, so, um, I know, I have a, a ex-Leo boyfriend, and it, it definitely seemed like he was pretty, um, he was pretty honest, and, and I got the notion that he was being very true to me, but he said, he, he was much younger with these big muscles and this damn fine tattoo on his big muscles. And I don't know, I, I met someone that I thought was a better person, someone more that I thought resonated with me more, which was not the, not what I thought it was. The person tended out not to resonate as much as I thought the person did <laughs> and um, I really broke his heart and but afterwards I know that he's been like like a chicken without a head going all over the place and I know he's been wanting me back but I'm not gonna have him back I'm not I'm not sure whether to have him back because I know that he's been all over the world since I and I know he's been wanting me back for a while so I don't know whether to trust him or not. That's the thing. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> okay, so enough about my life. Um, then we have on the 31st of March, Venus entering your 10th house of career. Woohoo! This is wonderful because you're looking really good to those authoritative figures, to your bosses, you're shining in your career. Money could be rolling in, you may be promoted, or you may get uh, um, more money, you know, because it's just like right on top of your chart, and it's just really shining very strong here. Taurus is about money that you earn, so definitely looks, Leo, like you can be getting a raise, and especially because you have that full moon in the second house that belongs to Taurus, so in the first of March, you have that full moon in Virgo in your second house in the money you earn, and then at the end of the month, you have a second um, um, Venus going into Taurus in your tenth house, and the second full moon, which is a blue moon in Libra, that has to do with business contracts, that has to do with love, that has to do with communication. So, um, definitely, and and it could be also with you know love with the Gemini or getting your flirt on with someone online or so but the communication and the love is is very strong there for Leo people um your your um your reputation in regards to love is shining you're feeling very cherished okay so this is really good in regards to your reputation and love at the end of the month perhaps you convince the person that um, that you're going to be true and only they are the one that that you want okay and it's going to take a while to convince the person as you see Venus and Saturn are meeting in the middle of the month and um, and so there may be a little bit of a bump in the middle of the month, but at the end of the month, if you are trying to convince a person of your love, then it's really going to shine very much. Yes, you get a start into it, especially if, if it doesn't really matter whether you're single or not, but it, it's, uh, it, it's starting in, there's a little bumpy ride in the middle, and then it blooms, it blossoms, it just... 
the fruition because it's a full moon of whatever you've been working on the whole month in regards to love and business and work it's just going to come to a culmination that money and that love is going to be pouring in and you're going to feel very cherished okay so hugs and kisses to you all thank you for liking sharing and subscribing and check out the other videos your ascendant your moon or your sun bye